Cities Day. So uh, from uh, United Nations since 2014, 14, so we have a big responsibility to make the new generation of uh, cities that could be more resilient, more sustainable, but also give the opportunity to people be more happy, to be happier. So for this uh, well-being cities team to address from blueprint to green print, sustainable buildings and sustainable living, I would like to invite Nun Fidel from Savalis to get here in the stage with me. Please feel comfortable, any seat, please, the side that you like more. Paul Peterson also with us. And you can give a big applause for Paul Peterson. And also Miguel Verissim. And thanks a lot to be with us with this. Uh, yes. Okay. So we'll begin with the presentation uh, of Miguel Grissin. Yes, that you have uh, a PowerPoint. I think okay. that uh, you. So, um, thank you. Quickly, only a few words. I think that we are we are uh, right now. You, you can put the PowerPoint uh, because the first slide is about the, uh, this is a, a, a an artistic intervention in a, an amazing picture uh, and and it, it it's more like what we are uh, facing now. This is the industrial revolution, the dawn of, of industrial revolution, and right now we have the city. I don't know it's, it, if it's real. This is as near uh, near Paris, and uh, in a way that, that's the problem we are trying to turn around. Is that buildings? Uh, it's, that's a Copacabana skyline at Asnier. Uh, Asnier. Uh, it, this picture is uh, uh, at Bath in Asnier. It, it's it's from Seurat, and uh, in the turn of the 19th century, we face almost the same problems we are facing now. But the, the, the model that was then uh, raising was the Industrial Revolution, and now we are trying to manage the, the impacts of Industrial Revolution. So the, the only, these are only two cultural, I think, uh, uh, inputs. So we are, we are facing that, that uh, from a linear industrial culture to a circular bioeconomics. Uh, uh, in fact, we are we are we have uh, now uh, we are facing the, the the right terms to to I think sustain sustainability is uh, outdated. We are now in the uh, more in the biocentric uh, um, problem or, or model. Uh, the resources that, that that circular economy we are trying to face only can manage. I think we are. We are now uh, understanding that we can only manage it with, with, with nature, in, in fact. So we must think not in objects, but in systems. And the problem is about the, the, if, uh, the, the Industrial Revolution designed everything. Everything in our life is desi designed. So if the design is, is a bad design, we must face now a new design thinking. So, I'm trying to, 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 to bring you uh, two texts, awarded texts and the patented uh, texts, uh, that have a little bit of biomimetics uh, around the, 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 the concepts. Um, the, the, the term blueprint to green print, because they didn't let the blueprint face. So this is a, 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 an eco-efficient window. Uh, in a way, it turned to the, uh, a nation technology that's called the, the Trombe Wall. Uh, I think you can see it right, right here. It's like uh, uh, the, the fat in our skin. Uh, we have thermal inertia in our skin, so it's like uh, manage the, 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 the thermal inertia, inertia. Where in the building it it's makes sense, that's in the uh, inside, outside layer of the 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 the, 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 the spaces so uh, the g 
it's like a, a, a battery uh, in the building. So we are, you can see that there's a, there's a concentrator, a, sol a solar uh, uh, radiation concentrator. The, the, the energy is, is, uh, is stored in this uh, heavy battery, uh, let me call it like, like that, and it, in the end of the day, uh, by convection, it uh, spreads the, the, the heat um, uh, stored in the, in the, in the heavy uh, battery uh, to, to the space. This, uh, let me only show you how, how it uh, works. So during the day, the reflector uh, stored the energy, the solar energy, and uh, in the end of the day, we could manage to have 34 degrees in, the, in that, in that uh, uh, heavy, heavy battery, uh, natural battery, passive battery. So in a way, it, it could, uh, we proved uh, scientifically, because it was an R&D project, uh, the, the lab results were amazing. Uh, and and uh, uh, right now, I think we can uh, do it. Uh, we are trying to, 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 to develop a little bit more this technology. And uh, right now, working with solar panels, PV solar panels and the heat, heat uh, pump, once we have here in this green, greenhouse, round the uh, cylinder, uh, off cylinder uh, greenhouse, we have almost 70 degrees, you know. Uh, it's amazing how, how, how we can, how much energy it can create. The second uh, technology is the battery buildings. In a way, the, the, uh, we call it the, the muscle. This was developed with a French partnership with CAA. CAA, uh, it's the, the, the renewable part of Commissariat d'Energie Atomique uh, in France uh, at Bourguet du Lac. Uh, so we, 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 we thought about a system to refurbish uh, ancient buildings, to make stronger communities, stronger buildings, and stronger urban habitats. So we started with a social approach, trying to build stronger communities. Once they, they could manage everything that, that you will see uh, further on, uh, to, to build a strong community, they, they had to create uh, 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 rules to, to manage the energy, the water. So uh, this is like a system, a system that uh, uh, starting with the, with the existing building, we reinforce the building, we do new infrastructures, communication, electricity, and so on, elevators, and greenhouses to to uh, to food and and uh, uh, urban farming. And we could even add f more, more layers to the building. So we, we could uh, demolish a few, few, uh, few buildings trying to have more, more space to nature. Um, this is a, a, a new layer to elderly and children to, to, to play and to urban farming, as, as we told. Uh, the, energy, the water, new, new, new way of thinking. So we cut by half almost the ecological footprint of the community. Doing this, this uh, survey, we could manage to, to, to reduce the drastically the, the, the impacts of the community. So these are a few. These were uh, shortlisted to what design can do. I don't think you, you know the, the contest. We made this to, to India, but with the prefabricated buildings. In, it, it was not a refurbishing, but the building was made like uh, in less than three months. I think we could make, make a, a building uh, easily, uh, like a, a prefabricated system. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think that we, uh, it's really interesting to, to see these uh, examples and to see how we can change uh, not only 
from a circular economy but to a regenerative economy. So trying to have not only a new approach of the buildings but also with new materials. Uh, I think it's the goal. Uh, uh, the regenerative <laughs> word, for example, yesterday I was in Saralves uh, assisting the uh, uh, lecture from uh, Vandana's uh, Shiva. Yes. And, uh, and uh, I think that we are, we are now Hardly uh, say we 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 are in fact in the in the core of the of the problem because we can't change anything only thinking about cities or putting cities to work or something like that we must face our relationship with nature of and course, it's yes. only working with nature nature is like a low entropy machine you know uh, yes 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 and <laughs> so, it's important to have nature as an inspiration. So the same way that the, the, the nature used the water and the energy, for example, should be also the model to implement in our building. So I pass to Paul Peterson because he's uh, expert in this water energy nexus. Uh, and um, how, how do you see uh, that we can uh, have not only uh, a new buildings and new architecture, but also uh, all this new way of living that we can regenerative our uh, resources and also become each building like uh, an uh, organ, like our body, to produce and to manage more efficiently the, these, these resources. Thank you. I mean, individual buildings and neighborhoods and entire municipalities are having their relationships changed with nature and changed with the water cycle specifically thanks to climate change. Climate change affects the water cycle in two very dynamic ways. One, flooding. And two, on the other end of the spectrum, drought. And we have to deal with that in our rural environments and farming and agriculture, but in our in our our, our rural environments, but also our urban environments. Our cities, our homes, our infrastructure is affected in ways that I don't think we can cope anymore. In, two, in 2005, when Hurricane Katrina hit the city of New Orleans, the entire city flooded. An entire city was almost wiped off the map. We all saw this year, northwestern China, a massive flooding. With tens of millions of people affected. Pakistan last year, yes. entire cities, two thirds of the entire country underwater. This is all due to climate change and we can't deny that. So how do we deal with that in our rural environments or in our cities and with our infrastructure all the way up to the individual buildings? And in my opinion that it's, spe it's specific to water and water security is we distribute that access to potable water, cleaning water, drinking water, to neighborhoods and individual buildings. Our company has developed a highly efficient method of tapping another water resource from harvesting humidity. So each individual building, each neighborhood, and large municipal scale water harvesting solutions are now coming available thanks to more efficient ways of, of, of condensing humidity, which Sadly, we have access to more of, thanks to rising humidity rates and rising temperatures. So, like your technology, our technology can be incorporated into every single building, every single home, in a dis to, to enable distributed access to water. Currently, the method of distribution of water to buildings and homes and is, you know, municipal water treatment plants. The problem with municipal water treatment plants that we're experiencing and is getting worse is that whenever we have a deluge, a major flood, minor floods these days, we see in even modern western cities an 80% or more sometimes increase in incident rates immediately after a flood in Cryptosporidium, Guardia, E. coli, because they're overwhelmed. The Mississippi River and the New Orleans Delta, Bangladesh and other places are now seeing salinity rates rising dramatically upstream, upriver, right, because of drought and, and, and the lowering of the, uh, the water table and the water level of the rivers. So that affects our water supply. 
the silting up of our reservoirs and our, uh, um, and our wells after a flood and just generally from overuse and, and, and neglect is requiring us to find more ways to access water. And your company, for example, has found ways to access energy, thermal energy, with novel technology incorporated into the building. Our novel technology incorporated into the building is simply a dehumidification system on the rooftop of the building that enables yeah. access to water at the source without having to transport our it via pipes. It could be a part of our system. Of the, course. Re the recirculation and the yeah. purifying. And so the only other way to deliver potable water currently up until our technology came around is by water truck. The carbon footprint impact of transporting 5,000 gallon water trucks around the cities, which still happens today in many, many modern cities all over the world, it's been incredibly expensive. Yes. And, 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 re and, and, and it has a massive carbon footprint impact. It's just, it, it never made sense. Well, it no longer needs to be. Desalination plants are extraordinarily expensive in terms of capex and, and you know, carbon footprint. And the ecological impact to the marine life along the coastline for many, many, many miles from a desalination plant. Well, taking into account that ecological impact and the carbon footprint of transporting that water from a desalination plant, it just doesn't really make any sense, not to me. If you can find a way to tap another portable water source directly from the atmosphere, incorporated into buildings with smart architecture, smart urban planning, that to me is a solution for our, our current generation. Yeah, thank you, Paul. And, um Besides the, oh, this aspect of the adaptation, I, sh I should say, to become uh, cities more resilient, uh, as you said, with better water management, uh, and don't you think, and before passing to, to Nun Fidel's, but this, uh, this question for you, don't you think that we are facing, uh, I should say, uh, um, three perspectives? One, that we have more, uh, extreme events that are more, have more impact in the cities. The other is uh, the, the lack of use resources and the, to use resources more sustainable. And the third one is bring, bringing a new perspective to build, and I, I should say build back better uh, um, these new neighborhoods and new buildings that remember me that in uh, old ways, in the very old buildings, the architecture have these principles to use more the light, the sun and so on that we then forget during the 80s and the 90s and uh, we have to come back with, the, with some of that principles that were used. Back to the fundamentals, right? Yeah. Back to living more appropriately with nature. And the fundamentals haven't changed in tens of thousands of years. We've always had a relationship with water. Mankind and municipalities and farmers have always had a relationship with water. We've changed that because we tried to conquer nature over the last especially 100 years and remove ourselves from nature. And that's just silly, of course. But it's, we're now suffering the consequences. And we've been willingly blinded to the risks and the consequences of removing ourselves from the water cycle and nature in general. On a grand scale, on a major scale, and I don't want to wax philosophical here or get too political, but I don't think it's any secret that the climate refugee crisis is upon us. And I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit beyond just cities and buildings, if I may, for a minute. I think, if not the primary, if not one of the, the primary cause, one of the major causes of the civil war in Syria, for example, and the current crisis in Gaza is exacerbated dramatically, if not primarily caused, entirely caused, by drought. Right? When you have hundreds of thousands of military aged men in Syria who are, who are already vulnerable, then desperate, then angry, then violent, and then vengeful, what you have is suffering on a grand scale with millions of refugees now pouring into Europe and, hitting, and now 
trying to find a home in our European urban environments. And that is happening in Africa, it's happening in South Central America. If you follow the American news, mm -hmm. you see caravans of millions of refugees coming up to the Mexican border, and it's a, it's a major political issue. Well, it all has to do with our relationship with water and drought and not necessarily lack, not necessarily people not turning, not that it's not important to turn the tap off when you're brushing your teeth, of course you should, but our relationship with water too. is so fundamental and we've neglected that. And the capex and the infrastructure investment required to, to, to serve entire municipalities or rural communities even more so expensively, we just don't have and we're not, or, and or politically not willing to spend it. So a solution of several, including desalination and others, is to find ways to, to deliver distributed access to water with atmospheric humidity harvesting systems. That's the technology that we develop. So our relationship with water hasn't changed. Our access to water, however, has been neglected. Fortunately, there are new technologies out there now that enable us to have access to water that can at very least, I hope, mitigate and minimize that risk that leads to political, and political violence, armed conflict, suffering, famine. Okay, again, I'm getting a little bit broad and philosophical beyond talking about urban infrastructure and architecture. But it is critical, our relationship with water, from small rural communities in the middle of sub-Saharan Africa to our cities right here we're sitting in today. It means that without um, fulfilled the basic needs, we are not able to think about their sustainability perspective. Yeah, we've outgrown our capacity. I mean, I mean, there's over 8 billion people on the planet today. At the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, I mean, since, since that time to today, we've doubled our population and doubled again. And the infrastructure hasn't really improved in maximum capacity. Can, I, can, can I add only, only one image to, to the audience? Uh, are there uh, any architects in the, in the audience? I don't think so. But in a way, <laughs> let me <laughs> only... No, only uh, you, <laughs> no, no. Uh, let me add only, only an image uh, regarding this. Not, not only this, but the, 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 the idea uh, that I, I've showed the muscle. The idea of the new buildings are that everything, they, they must be almost off-grid. Everything they consume, they use, must leave the building to be useful. Like the water, uh, the, the waste, the food waste, and so on. So, in a way, the buildings are, are we are trying to, to, to do self-sustainable cities. Because the, we don't have the resources to do this hard infrastructure, like uh, put the rivers under the roads and so on. This is the past. We, can, we don't have the resources to do it. So we must use the ecosystem service like rivers, like uh, to, to, to do the, the, the final work to purify the water and to, like our grandfathers went to the rivers to, to drink the water. Uh, our buildings must uh, let uh, the, the, the... And be uh, totally sustainable. And, 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 and uh, the, the less impactful uh, as possible, you know? Yes, uh, with the yes. high efficiently. No, uh, no. Nuno, uh, Nuno is, uh, Fidel is uh, the head of sustainability and Savills. And uh, um, Paul Peterson uh, brings us this uh, big vision of different cities, uh, diverse cities in uh, worldwide. So um, we are running. Uh, out of time uh, to face um, big problems like uh, big cities without uh, the conditions conditions uh, to, to, to live. So uh, this sustainable living that brings us to discuss here, how can we um, not only be a role model in the development countries and so on, but how can we uh, create these uh, new cities that is necessary to put living with the, the better conditions? It's a tough question uh, because we don't have so much space to create new cities. Yeah. So um, this is the big challenge that we have today. We have to, to rethink the cities as they are. Of course, there are places where we can start a new city 
with, with new ideas, with all this technology. But the, I think the main challenge for all is to um, rebuild the cities that we have today. We have to rebuild and rehabilitate the buildings that we have in our, in our cities. That, that is also good because we are not creating new embodied carbon. So that's a, go a good way to reshape the buildings using the same structures, but redefine the infrastructures, um, creating new, new connections for water, uh, new ways of saving energy, um, having the buildings uh, with uh, uh, using technology to monitorize, monitorize the, the data of consumption. If we don't know where we are losing energy or consumption too much water, we don't know how to act. And this, for instance, is when we, and we have been talking all this morning about water. Um, major municipalities don't know the total consumption of water of what they have in the pipes that connects all the net of the, of, of the city. They lose water somewhere in the middle Almost between, 40%. between getting from the, the, the river to the head, to the, the, the water treatment, then the, the, on the, the pipe Until that the connects pipe. to, yes. So they don't know what water was missing, what water yes. they, they, they expanded. Uh, I don't say the, the word correctly. Uh, but the, the, the main goal is, and I think the, this is the, more than, than creating new cities, reshape the cities, redefine the cities that we have today, uh, uh, and this is the challenge for architects, urbanists, people, getting people to information. For instance, uh, the municipality of Porto um, has a, a department that advises people to, to how can I benefit for, for um, sustainable solutions for my house. So they have a, a department where people can go and try to understand how can they improve their apartment, their residence with sustainability measures. And I think this is one of the ways to rehabilitate the cities, rehabilitate the buildings itself, and I think that, that has to be a, 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 um, a common way to, to work, because it's going to be difficult to have new cities. Or we demolish everything? Yeah. We, we have on not only to reshape, but the, the, the question was related with the, that we could be a role model, but what, what we should uh, give in terms, not only inspiration, but in terms of planning to cities that are growing so fast in some countries, like in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa and so yeah. on, that they, they are living in a poor conditions, and we have to... to to tackle these, these, these conditions. Otherwise, I think that this uh, uh, climate migration will be uh, Definitely. Uh, uh, completely uh, out of control. So we, it, it is nowadays not only the war, but also the, the, the climate migration is an issue. So uh, we have to tackle these uh, cities, not only the European no, cities no. and uh, Asian cities that have a lot of conditions and, and we can reach it. And also we can cut off of the grid some old buildings. I, I think that could be possible in the, in the future. It's already do, uh, being doing that uh, in, in by, uh, 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 Holland, uh, how do we call it now? Netherlands? It's Netherlands, no, not, not really. It's, uh, uh, well, uh, they are doing it. Uh, they are far uh, in the front from, of that. They are whole buildings that are out of grid, regenerating every city. Is like doing that. What, what I was telling uh, earlier. Uh, they they are renaturing the the rivers and trying to do it like an infrastructure. You know, okay. like green corridors, water corridors. Uh, the idea I, I uh, passed here. But, uh, if a few moments ago, uh, uh, it's already being done. Uh, for example, in, in, in Germany, to, to tackle the problem of, of floods and so on, they are using casters to, to, to And related to with it. this, uh, sorry, Miguel and Nuno, only related with this, with an example. 
uh, about urban cycle, water cycle management. Mm -hmm. For example, in European cities, we were uh, impermeabilizing the soil for, for hectares and hectares, uh, square kilometers. That's the best. And we have the opportunity not to do this uh, mistake in the in some other countries that are growing so so fast. We'll be able to not only reshape our cities to make the spaces more greener, uh, and uh, but also uh, say to the, the, the these new uh, spaces in the, the other uh, countries not to do that. It's possible, and and there are great solutions. And, and, and I wanted to give this, um, this was not made, but could be take, for instance, for, for Africa, when we talk the Angola, Mozambique, that have this, um, that is country that we know well. Uh, for instance, in a social uh, neighborhood in Lisbon uh, called Boa Vista, mm -hmm. they start reshaping the, the, the houses. They had a, a, a normal house with one floor, and to, uh, that would take one family. On the same spot, they create a building that has two floors, and the, the, the balcony of the first floor is a garden of the, of the, of the, the person on, on the bottom. And the, the, and the rooftop on the other top has also a, a, garden, a garden that can be used to, 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 to farming. So these new green infrastructures that we... Exactly. So they create this, this, this in, on a social uh, neighborhood. And, that, and the, the water collect after passing to the garden is recollect and go to, to, and to the filter and go again to, 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 to the water, to, to nice. the building. So yes. this is interesting. And this is how suddenly you can do this on social um, neighborhoods. And this is an opportunity with that, micro that, with micro examples. I with should micro say. examples to expand it. And I think these case studies should be studied correctly and be available to all to all kind of, of, of countries. And uh, if we do it well here, I don't. Uh, for instance, we we many times we import um, solutions that everyone has at this moment, glass facades everywhere. Okay. There are countries that cannot, with the sun intensity, to have all glass because they will need a lot of ventilation, a lot of air machinery to work it out. So we have to, to rethink a little bit that every kind of building cannot be constructed in every kind of city. We have to, to look uh, uh, and b get to basics, how, 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 to, how yes. Paul says. So, yes, yes. To pass. Uh, now the room increased the number of participants, <laughs> what is great, and also in the new, uh, in the future of, uh, of these, these cities. So Paul, uh, uh, giving this room like an example that we are in a city that have this fast growing, um, can, can, can we um, change the, 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 the mindset when we fund some cities uh, to make some uh, new spaces and to build and rebuild, um, not to, to, to construct in concrete, but to construct in, by nature, with nature-based solutions, can we uh, introduce this uh, mindset change to, to have these new cities with, the, with the better water management in the, in the urban areas? Well, of course we have to. I mean, I'm, I'm not an architect, I'm not an urban planner, I'm not a civil engineer. I mean, but these but you have the technology to, to implement it. But we absolutely have the technology to make our buildings more energy efficient, in fact, energy positive. We, we certainly do. Every building, every home can be energy positive. Every building, every home can be water positive. I mean, there are a lot of buildings and industrial processes and manufacturing facilities that are very, very water challenged and energy challenged. Data centers is a great example. We work with data centers all over the world. They're extraordinarily energy hungry and cooling and water consumers, mm -hmm. right? But 
our entire society and this generation and the next generation are more and more dependent upon data centers. Our entire economy is dependent on data centers. How do we make them, these extraordinarily power hungry and water hungry buildings and infrastructure, at least water neutral and power neutral, perhaps even water positive? I, I don't know how we're going to do that, but that's a, it's a real challenge. So we can, certainly, there's technology, I'm talking about extreme examples. Data centers is an extreme example. But residential, commercial, light industrial buildings, we have the technology and this next generation of smart young people can, you know, as you get into engineering and, and architecture and urban planning and so on, you have the tools. You have the tools available to you to make our buildings water positive, yeah. energy positive, and sustainable. And it's important, we have to, we have to. Otherwise our cities become ghost cities. It won't be a place you want to live. And, it, and it's also, it's not just, not just urban and, and you know, macroeconomics, it's a, not just resiliency for our cities and our lifestyles. To me, it's a defense readiness problem, right? If our cities and our urban centers and our farms and our farmers are having to deal with, you know, especially water insecurity, that becomes a defense readiness problem. Yeah. That creates mm -hmm. political upheaval. That creates armed conflict. That destroys entire nations. So we, but focus again, on a macro in the, scale. And, and Miguel, do, do, and, uh, do you think that this, uh, this switch already occurred, in, not only in terms of the, the gain that companies and the civil yes, society yes, have yes, in terms yes. Uh, to be more sustainable yes, in that. As Paul, as Paul is, is, uh, told, told us, we, we have the technology. We have the technology. We, 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 but uh, uh, the, the, the major task here is to empower citizenship mm -hmm. because uh, citizens are not prepared. For example, we have this problem right now, political problem that, uh, uh, as I told in the 19th century, in the turn of the 19th century, we, we had already the solutions. For example, the first PV so solar panels are from mm -hmm. the 19th century. The electric cars, uh, the, every technology we are now uh, facing as a solution were invented in the 19th century. And it was a fight to choose the, the, the basket of technologies, was a fight. There were already, uh, for, for example, John Stuart Mill and so on, they were ecolo ec ecologists. They, they, they fought, fought for, 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 for uh, the not against against the, the the fossil fuels and so on and the the the, the mineral uh, exploitation and so on because they they faced they, they already told us that it was it was they, they were um, they were uh, resources that we couldn't uh, uh, re not renewable resources you know so in a way the, the the fight is almost the same from the 19th century to to now and we now we must empower the, the citizenship, the, 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 the new generation. To with, implement with knowledge. For ex with not knowledge, only with first knowledge. First of all, with knowledge. Okay. Uh, and the, because the critical mass must be raised uh, uh, with knowledge, not, not uh, reactive, like uh, let's do an emergent uh, change and so on, because that's the, what the, the, majors, the major companies uh, wants to treat us to. like puppets, you know. Uh, yes. So let's face the the change right now. We must. It's an emergency. It's an emergency, and everyone goes. It's an emergency. And uh, if you stop right now to produce CO two or or emissions, nature will take uh, one hundred years <laughs> to, 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 to clean. balance to clean. To you know? yes, so yes. we are not facing an emergency. We are facing a, a knowledge uh, problem. We okay. must uh, multiply knowledge and put everyone to think yeah. and not to react, okay? Okay. Uh, thank you for this first uh, part of, the, of this session. Now um, I, I will pass for uh, questions uh, from that side. I know that some of you arrive uh, right now and you are not in the, deeply in, the, in this discussion. Um, first, these uh, smart young people, like Paul said. But anyway, we are discussing these well-being cities to be more sustainable, not on sustainable buildings, but also a, a sustainable living. So I, I will, a, anyone have a question to, okay, thank you very much. Uh, I have a question for Paul. 
about uh, harvesting humidity. I'm a bit concerned that uh, if we mass market this solution worldwide, won't that impact a normal uh, water cycle? That's a very good question. Um, on an anthropological scale, yes. Yeah. The atmospheric humidity con condensation mechanically quite frankly has, uh, if you understand how um, distillation, condensation, and, and, and evaporative cooling works, has a global cooling effect, which on the surface initially at first glance seems like a really good idea. But if we, and it, it, this, 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 I'm, I'll use an analogy, a comparison. You're probably familiar with the uh, recent technological breakthroughs around DAC, direct air carbon capture, right? There are a lot of companies out there that are putting out massive, massive vacuum cleaners, size of football pitches <laughs> and bigger, trying to suck carbon out of the atmosphere, which, and they compress it and bury it underground, and it's kind of silly, but, you know, <laughs> yes. somebody's making money doing that. Think of that in terms like that, sucking water vapor out of the atmosphere, because water vapor is a, a climate change. Change. It's a greenhouse gas. Greenhouse yeah. gas, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, our atmosphere is 70% nitrogen and 20% some oxygen, argon, and a few others, and water vapor is about 2%, right? We're adding to that. The water vapor in our atmosphere is increasing thanks to global warming, and water vapor, and, and, and the warmer the air temperature, the more humidity that the water can hold. Right? Mm -hmm. It's becoming more humid. So the idea on a grand scale, I mean anthropomorphic scale, sucking um, this greenhouse gas, water vapor, out of the atmosphere does have an immediate global cooling effect. But what if we go too far? Right? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very good question. We have to consider that. I mean, how far can you go before you dehumidify and we're living in you know, a desert, a arid climate? <laughs> yes. uh, there's a lot of big picture crazy ideas out there like we've all read recently about these knuckleheads thinking about you know putting sulfur at 80,000 feet in the atmosphere for you know eco um, engineering to, to block sunlight it's, it's a financial tr tr yeah, transition there's a lot of fantasies out technology there. It's exactly. a financial so, transition yes very good question sir everything has its limits um, i'm looking at this from the perspective currently and you know 2023 the current problem to solve how do we find cheaper, cost-effective, energy-efficient ways to deliver potable water from a source other than aquifers that are drying up and or being contaminated? And that's condensing atmospheric humidity at a local distributed scale. But what if we go too far? What if, a, what if national governments or billionaire <clears throat> tech bros in, the, in, in, in Silicon Valley decide to take this and go too far? Yes. Good question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any, any question? There's another one. Thank you. Hello. Uh, from a young person perspective, what would, uh, there is looking for a place to live, what would be the most sustainable uh, decision to build a new place? We're using a uh, um, or organic buildings or ecological buildings or to restore a place that already exists and a house that already is there is already built well I, I have an opinion I but first the speaker you, you, you know uh, where where <laughs> uh, in Europe in, in India in South Africa where uh, here in Portugal for example in Portugal I, I think we, we we can for example uh, uh, there's a, there's an, an equation that, that says that uh, uh, the bigger the structure the organism is, uh, it's regarding metabolism, it's the clever law, uh, the, bigger the, 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 the bigger the organism is, the, the less energy and more efficient it, it is uh, regarding the metabolism, the, expand, uh, the, the water, the energy, and so on, so on, so on. That's why uh, 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 a cellular uh, it, it expends almost the same energy as an elephant or, or more than an elephant regarding the scale, you know. Uh, so in a way, we are trying to, to, to face that the, 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 the new cities must be concentrated, 
must be more, 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 more uh, like 15 minutes uh, city or and so on. We are trying to put everyone in cities to, but the problem is that nature needs men because 85% of nature is already artificialized. Uh, we must deal with nature because that's what we done in the last uh, 100,000 years. We've changed nature and nature can't live without us. That's why I told that, that the, the leaving the, the interland, the, the interior parts of the, of the territory, it's a, a gift to the, the, the companies to explore energy, to cut the trees, to, they are, wow, <laughs> amazing. It's a, it's a, a dinner, you know? They, they, we can't let the, 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 the territory. So in a way, I, my, 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 my proposal to you is that you, you must rebuild the house, but in the interior. In the countryside. In the yeah. countryside. Okay, Nuno? No, no. Yes, I wanted to go for that uh, rebuild. Um, sometimes it annoyed me a little bit when, when I heard we are going to construct an eco resort <laughs> in the middle of, 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 a, of a landscape, of a beach. We are touching on a virgin uh, soil. It's a stupidity. Sorry, to, I have to say this. We have already places that were touched by man, uh, changed by man, so we have to look at that areas, look at that spaces and rebuild on that. And that is the, 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 the important thing, trying to use the, the, the most of the structure that already exists, not produce more waste, not produce recycling the, 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 the structures that is possible, if not, okay, rebuild it consistently with, uh, um, sust with sustainable measures and, and rethinking architecture. Well, I, I will, Paul, do you want to add some to this uh, question uh, about, about how, what is your, our option is to uh, trying to build new spaces that, that are more sustainable or uh, well, well, I don't think we have a choice. We have to. Guess, I, I think our population globally is beginning to top out, and there's always been a lot mm -hmm. of concern about going to t 10 billion, 12 billion people. I, I think that's changed at the end of the 20th century, and now we see China's decline, you know, population in decline, Russia's population decline. It's that's not really as big of a concern as we thought it once was, but. But still, we need to you know, redevelop you know, old infrastructure, certainly. Build new cities, I don't know. I mean, if you look at China, what's happened in the last 20 or 30 years, there are hundreds and hundreds of ghost cities that are capable yeah. of housing a billion exactly. people that are empty, empty, just ghost towns. Yeah, can, you can go too far. So, mm -hmm. so that's one end of the spectrum. The other end of the spectrum is let your infrastructure, you know, devolve. Yeah, we, I think, I think there's, there's, the solution is continuing to improve with modern technology our existing cities. Mm -hmm. the, as an American, the suburban life is something we experimented with and perfected from the 1950s that is just, in my opinion, horrible and boring. Right? Uh, urban life and small communities and small towns independent towns, not suburbs. It has the to sprawling, be independent. Sprawling, yeah. sprawling yeah. suburbs. Uh, that's, that's the wrong way to go, too. So w we already are in, this, in, in, the, in a, a new... I'm not sure. In it. <laughs> Sorry? I'm not sure about the, the, the second part. Uh, well, urban sprawl? No, no, it's not an urban sprawl. It's like uh, little communities, yeah. like villages and in the interland and so on. I think it's being like uh, in the next 10, 20 years will be the, the solution. Uh, it's not possible to concentrate everyone in the city yeah. because uh, it's not, if, if, for example, changing the city is almost impossible as Nunu to, to, told us. Uh, uh, changing the infrastructure to a natural infrastructure, for example, trying to, to rebuild the, the roads, the, the, the yeah. pipe, pipe rivers and so on, it's almost impossible. So I'm seeing like, uh, 
little communities in the countryside or outside the, the it's not a sprawl, it's like a, a redistribution. Anyway, we, yeah, redistribution. absolutely. Yes. Yes. I love that. Yes. Yeah. There's a much and, better and, way to live. And yeah. right? yes, in a way, like Paul said, we, we will have these uh, cities that could be uh, ghost cities without mm, people, because, for example, uh, for years, uh, uh, um, mayors decide to build new uh, theaters and new commercial areas and so on. So we already can see from the 80s that commercial areas that are completely abundant, yeah. industrial abandoned. areas that are completely empty, it's a waste the old waste. factories that have like 2,000 employers and so on are being transforming to new spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, old churches even, like in Italy, we have new and the churches with uh, new functionalities and exactly. so on. So I think that it's necessary yes. also to, to have a new use Absolutely. of some spaces. And, uh, otherwise, we'll be like ghosts in the, I in the middle agree. of the cities. Yeah. Repurposing our existing infrastructure is exactly. fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Completely agree. And regarding the buildings, let me only say one thing. Uh, uh, try uh, uh, to do buildings like we can uh, build and and build like uh, and uh, deconstruct the buildings because we can we can face the buildings like uh, a Lego a Lego structure you know like something that we can because uh, uh, the life cycle of buildings like uh, constructing use and waste it's so out, it's so 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 primitive uh, uh, we 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 can we can face the buildings to 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 uh, this uh, life cycles, this, this waste uh, problem regarding the, the, the constructions, uh, materials, and so on. So we, we must face the buildings like uh, parts of the building to be or re, 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 reused or uh, recycled and so on. So the buildings must be like uh, pieces, like uh, Lego constructions, you know? Uh, let me let me see if we have space for um, one more question. So, a uh, last question will be the voluntary, the courage voluntary to make one more question. The last one. Don't be shy, please. I have a challenge. If there's no question, that, uh, very so, quickly. Yes. Um, one of the major things that we didn't talk here about the new cities. It's that with the new cities or the reshape of the cities, we have to rethink mobility. Rethink mobility, yes. And, and this is a, another great challenge that we have on, in front of us to create areas. And the, you were talking about the 50 minutes walk cities that people can find everything that they need nearby. So this is important, uh, mainly here in Portugal, that we have rethink. We, here in Portugal, we stamped the areas as industrial, residential, retail, office. No, we have to have a mixed use mm -hmm. for, for having people that can go to, by walking or by bicycle to work, to the school, take their children, and not having uh, a connection that I have a fantastic building, sustainable, 45 minutes from, me, from the work, like and I have to go by car. The big <laughs> let, me, let, let me take uh, your example, your challenge, also to make the analogy uh, between cities and our own body, because mobility is like our circular system, our blood system, and we have to circulate in cities, and then the buildings that could be the organs of our uh, like the organs of our body, and also, uh, as Noon said, and also Paul Peterson said about the importance of data, that is our brain. So, we think cities, and only to conclude, um, uh, thank you for your presentation, and also for your contribution in sharing your experience and knowledge with uh, this such um, good, 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 and smart young people that are with here, uh, with, that are with us this uh, this morning, in saying that this to to have a sustainable cities, to have sustainable buildings, and to living sustainable, is to rebuild with new pr purpose, 
with new perspective to use materials and to use technology. So um, keep this path to uh, have new cities more comfortable and happier for you. Thank you a lot. Thank you. Thank you.